Now the uh, next uh, topic of discussion is uh, glycogen metabolism. Now glycogen, uh, as you all know, is a polysaccharide, uh, homopolysaccharide, and uh, normally glycogen is stored in the liver and the uh, kidneys and also in the muscles. Now uh, liver glycogen is uh, useful for the maintenance of uh, blood glucose level during the fasting state. Whereas the muscle glycogen is um, not uh, contributing to the blood glucose level, uh, rather it, uh, uh, it helps in the uh, delivery of uh, energy for the purpose of muscle contraction. Now, um, in a well-fed state, uh, when the glucose supply is um, enough, the excess of uh, glucose is converted to uh, glycogen by a process of uh, by a process known as glycogen synthesis and it is stored in the liver and the muscles now uh, when there is a fasting state that means from uh, breakfast to lunch then you know uh, the to maintain the glucose level in the blood the uh, glycogen that is stored in the liver has to be broken down by a process known as uh, glycogenolysis and uh, this provides the glucose uh, units for the maintenance of blood glucose level. Now we know that the normal uh, fasting level of blood glucose uh, is to be maintained uh, between uh, 70 mg to 100 mg per deciliter uh, and so uh, you know uh, because the uh, brain has to uh, can utilize only glucose uh, for the energy purpose and RPC also requires um, uh, glucose for its uh, activities. Now uh, the uh, glycogen synthesis uh, requires several enzymes and also glucose unit and, uh, and this glucose unit is contributed in the form of uh, UDP glucose that is uh, uridine diphosphoglucose units and for this you, we also need a, a small uh, preformed glycogen which is known as glycogen primer or um, glycogenin with a few uh, glucose units uh, incorporated. Now uh, further addition of uh, glucose unit is done with the help of UDP glucose and uh, uh, the enzyme required is uh, glycogen uh, synthetase or glycogen synthase. Now glycogen synthase uh, can add glucose units to the already existing glycogen primer uh, in an alpha 1,4 glycosidate linkage. Now uh, several uh, glucose units are added uh, in this uh, alpha 1,4 glycosidate uh, linkage and uh, glycogen also requires um, you know alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkage uh, where the branching of the glycogen molecule takes place because glycogen is a uh, highly branched molecule. So we need the, at the branch points the, glyco, uh, the glucose 1,6 uh, uh, glycosidate bonds. So uh, there is a uh, glucan transferase and also a branching enzyme uh, required in addition to glycogen uh, synthase uh, which is the rate limiting enzyme of course. Now uh, when the uh, glycogen is extended by about 11 to 12 uh, glucose units then a part of it for example a hexasaccharide that means 6 glucose units are transferred to the uh, adjacent uh, glycogen uh, chain but this transfer takes place in a alpha 1,6 glycosidic uh, linkage so there is a branch point uh, established and this is the uh, branching of uh, glycogen uh, molecule. Now uh, further the uh, function, uh, this also requires a glucan transferase as I told and a branching enzyme. Now uh, further addition of um, uh, UDP glucose uh, continues, that is the glucose unit from UDP glucose uh, continues in the 1,4 uh, alpha, uh, alpha glycosidic 1,4 linkage. Uh, till you know again a particular length is achieved and then again branching occurs. Now um, 
in all these processes the glycogen synthase is the rate limiting enzyme or the key enzyme. Now uh, the glycogen uh, synthase is under the uh, regulation of uh, various hormones. For example, epinephrine and uh, glucagon can activate this enzyme uh, via cyclic AMP. Now uh, these uh, hormones epinephrine and glucagon uh, stimulate the uh, adenine cyclase enzyme uh, present in the uh, cellular membrane and uh, converts the uh, adenosine uh, triphosphate <coughs> to the cyclic uh, 3-5-AMP. Dash, dash now the cyclic 3-5-AMP dash, dash uh, then uh, further uh, phosphorylates an enzyme known as cyclic AMP dependent uh, protein uh, kinase. This enzyme has got a wide uh, specificity and this uh, cyclic AMP dependent protein uh, kinase in its turn uh, you know phosphorylates the uh, glycogen uh, phosphorylase enzyme uh, making that uh, glycogen phosphorylase enzyme inactive. Uh, now uh, further uh, cyclic AMP uh, 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 adds phosphate um, uh, when uh, cyclic AMP adds phosphate to glycogen synthase enzyme it uh, becomes uh, uh, active when the phosphate is uh, removed the glycogen synthase uh, becomes uh, active so the phosphorylated form of glycogen synthase is uh, um, inactive and the dephosphorylated form of glycogen synthase is um, uh, active. So um, the uh, cyclic AMP has got uh, many roles to play that means at a particular time either glycogen synthesis is going on or a uh, glycogen breakdown is uh, going on. Uh, both these processes will not occur at the uh, same time. So in this manner epinephrine and uh, glucagon actually actually inhibit the glycogen synthesis because cyclic AMP is increased by these uh, increased by these hormones and cyclic AMP decreases the uh, glycogen uh, synthesis. Uh, so this is the how the glycogen synthesis is uh, uh, regulated. Insulin on the contrary uh, promotes uh, glycogenesis uh, because um, because it, it activates an enzyme known as protein phosphatase 1 and protein phosphatase 1 uh, removes the phosphate from the uh, glycogen uh, synthase enzyme and also glycogen synthase uh, kinase there is another enzyme uh, which can phosphorylate uh, the glycogen synthase and uh, uh, make it uh, inactive so uh, insulin has uh, got an action on positive action on uh, protein phosphatase uh, 1 uh, so that the, uh, the, the phosphate uh, from the glycogen synthase is uh, removed and so the enzyme becomes uh, active so uh, insulin promotes uh, glycogen synthesis whereas in the absence of um, insulin as seen in uh, diabetes mellitus the uh, glycogen synthesis uh, is decreased whereas the glycogen breakdown will be increased leading to hyperglycemia. So uh, this is short about the uh, glycogenolysis, uh, glycogen synthesis and its uh, regulation. Now let's talk uh, something about the glycogen breakdown or the glycogenolysis. Now uh, this takes place during the fasting state uh, so that the blood glucose level uh, is maintained uh, uh, properly. Now the uh, glycogen phosphorylase is also uh, regulated by the cyclic AMP uh, molecule. Now cyclic AMP is uh, produced uh, with the help of uh, adenyl cyclase acting on ATP. Now um, the adenyl cyclase remains in an inactive state. This uh, adenyl cyclase is activated to active adenyl cyclase with the help of the hormones that is uh, epinephrine and uh, glucagon. Now when, uh, cyclic, when cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase is uh, activated with the help of uh, uh, cyclic AMP, now this, um, this enzyme that is the cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase adds phosphate 
to the serine and uh, threonine amino acids of the glycogen uh, phosphorylase, phosphorylase and with this phosphorylation the enzyme that is the glycogen phosphorylase gets uh, activated. Now uh, glycogen uh, phosphorylase is uh, not directly activated but uh, there is a, another enzyme that is uh, glycogen phosphorylase kinase. So actually cyclic AMP uh, although it can phosphorylate uh, glycogen phosphorylase but it also can phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase kinase. Now this glycogen phosphorylase kinase uh, uh, further uh, in its turn activates the glycogen uh, phosphorylase by again uh, phosphorylation. ATP donates this uh, phosphate and the phosphate is added to the serine and uh, threonine uh, moieties of the uh, glycogen phosphorylase. Now uh, the glycogen phosphorylase uh, activated form can uh, break down the uh, uh, glycogen uh, molecule. This is known as glycogenolysis.